Sessions. Don't forget to email me at uh, gsjbcradio at gmail.com. Smooth now. Live FM. Getting it on as always. This is I Am Strive Strive Show. So we're going to be talking about some more stuff. Don't forget, go to our website so you can be a VIP listener every single day. Smooth 90.5 FM WGSJBC Radio. Ninety point five FM WGSG Radio. We live as always. Live as always. No podcast. No blog talk here. This is real talking. Real talk. Ladies and gentlemen, you're not gonna believe who we have back in the station in the studio after a long bout. We got the one and only Mr. Frederick Collins. He'll be coming up in a few minutes. We're going to be talking with him live. Find out what's going on with him. So y'all got to give me a call at 708-343-3906. 708-343-3906. Smooth 90.5 FM. This is the Rob G. Afternoon Drive Show. The time is 2.57. We're going to be bringing Collins on in a few minutes. Frederick Collins. He was running for a candidate. He was a candidate for mayor of Chicago for 2015. We're going to talk with him. Find out what's going on. Who is he supporting? What's going on with this man? Well, all right now. So, if y'all got any questions, 708-343-3906. 708-343-3906. Smooth 90.5 FM. So y'all got to give me a
Mr. Frederick Collins. How are you doing today, sir? I am absolutely blessed and glad to be back here. Well, it's good having you back here in the studio. It's back. It's good. As you can see, a lot of changes have been done here in the station. So what's been going on? Uh, well, yeah, you know, a lot of changes. <laughs> <laughs> so so what, what's been going on, man? You you sprung up. I've been trying to contact you. Tiffany been trying to contact you. What, what what's, what's going on? Well, what? you know, I've been doing the same thing that I've been doing ever since I was age 17 years old. I grew up on the greater west side of Chicago in the Henry Horner Projects. And it's really out here working day by day on the front lines in the streets at the grassroots uh, level uh, to improve our situation in our communities as well as in our nation and in our state and city. And what I mean by that is, is that within the black community, we have to understand and take pride not only in being black, but understand that we are fighting still for the same freedoms uh, that Martin Luther King, Thurgood Marshall, Frederick Douglass, and all of them were fighting for back then. The fight has not ended. Uh, slavery and injustice has just changed the way it looks. It has been placed on us in different ways. And we always hear this uh, conversation of economic development being freedom for us in the black community. Well, really, freedom for us in the black community, and Martin Luther King understood this, Frederick Douglass understood this, and that is legislatively. We're going to have to become more politically proactive, and that means being more involved, because legislation is what dictates how one lives and what freedoms and what justice one gets to uh, uh, have in their life. And so if you want better schools, you're going to have to do more than just uh, talk about you want better schools. You're going to have to legislative, legislatively go after them. That means running for some offices. That means taking control. That means understanding what share of the vote you hold. It has always been a complex thought to me and a, and a question within itself as to how 63% of this state can be African American. And yet we still have a white governor, a white mayor, a white attorney general, a white Cook County sheriff, a white mayor. You've got to be kidding me. And, and I'm going to tell you, if you take a look at every candidate that runs, black or white, you never really see the white school campaign ever in the white community. Where do they go to? The black community. They know where the powerful vote is at. Question is, how come we don't see it? Well, let me ask you a question, uh, Fred. Uh, I can call him Fred, ladies and gentlemen, because I've known him for some years. Um, what happened? Well, you know what? Anything you do, you need a plan and a strategy. Okay. And they are not the same thing. Okay. You can plan on something, but the strategy is how you achieve it. Okay. The way you go about it. A lot of my listeners... Um uh, sent out messages and asking, hey, when is Fred coming back on your station? We haven't heard from him. What's going on? And that's what prompted us to reach out to you and find out what's going on. And we've had we, we, we've had hate messages, emails, and everything like, hey, you got that guy on there. He's bashing people and everything. And uh, what was going on? Did he get scared because Willie Wilson got into office, uh, got into the uh, race? You know, what was going on? Was it... Uh, all a game or what? People wanted to know what was going on. They were backing you, standing behind your back and everything. Why? So that hasn't changed for us at all. What we did was we had a plan and a strategy to get rid of Rahm Emanuel. Okay. We all agreed on that. He's not uh, out yet. You know, we, we, we right. said, he's not <laughs> well, out yet. So. Well, we'll get to that point because we had some distractors and some clowns that came into it. And turned everything around. Okay. And what we talk about when we talk about a plan and a strategy to get rid of Rahm Emanuel and take back the mayor's office, change the city. Uh, our plan was to get the number one spot. Okay. So we campaigned for two years. We campaigned on the issues with realistic solutions. I mean, you were number one on the ballot. There you go. And, and you don't just get that. You were number one on the ballot. But what, what, right. what happened? You, know, you disappeared. You went ghost on us, man. Well, this is what happens. And this is one of the things we've been educating our people on is there is a political process. Okay. That is a Jim Crow process that still exists today. And it is well covered up. Uh, once you run on the ballot, become a candidate and get signatures and you get on the ballot, they have now what they call, and, and it's been there for a while, Harold was trying to change it. It is called signature challenges, where somebody out of anywhere comes up and challenges those who have signed papers for you to run for any office. 
And once you get into a signature challenge, then it comes into a process where they don't have to make any allegations that are truthful. It is a totally game when you get down there to the Board of Elections. Once you get down there, that signature challenge uh, lists all sorts of uh, innuendos and lies about any candidate that's running, and they're all the same such as invalid signature, uh, fraud, and so forth. What this so is, is a process. we're talking about Willie Wilson, of course. Well, we're the... talking about the whole process okay. that it has players in it, such as Rahm Emanuel, Willie Wilson, uh, Ricky Hendon, all these cats that come into it from back way in the day. You know, And this is part of the reason why people are still looking for that new, fresh voice, mm -hmm. those new ideas, those new fighters on the battlefield of freedom. Okay. Okay. And so once you get into that, then it's amount of money to be spent. All right. Well, if you read the Constitution, and this, and this is why, one of the reasons why I say we need to teach civics back in school. You notice in black urban areas, they teach you anything about the civics or about the Constitution. After you're out of seventh or eighth grade, they don't really go in depth into the MS and what it is. And so, therefore, our people really don't know their power because they're not taught it. But in the Constitution, the only two qualifications you have to run for office is that you be a American and that you be of age. Okay. Not amount of money. It says nothing about money whatsoever. Okay. So why is it that only here, and keep this in mind, only here, it's about money. Okay. From start to finish, they try to track and block you out with money. Well, we, 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 of course, we know uh, certain candidates are not. I mean, if it, let, let, let's, let's be real. It was Amara Inya, Dr. Amara Inya in the race. It was uh, Commissioner Shaw, and it was you, and it was Fre Frederick Collins. When I say uh, you, it was Frederick Collins and William Doc Walls. Four African Americans, three males, one female African American in the race. Now, it's just one African American in the race. Well, it's two. two. It's, it's two, two now. It's two but now. Cause you're right. Willie it's Wilson. practically just one it, it, Willie Wilson. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, it, that's it, it, right. It, yeah. Right. But uh, I, I'm, I'm not going to shoot, shoot, pull back or hold back. People want to know what happened with Fred Collins. Well, this Why? is what happened you with know, us. Amara, Amara said that the reason she got out is because she didn't have the money. Um. Shaw got out because he felt that he didn't have much of a backing. Uh, we want to know what what's going on with. Well, this is what happened. This is what happened in our campaign in our candidacy. We had the number one spot. We asked each one of those that you just named, mm -hmm. and you you were around when we did it. You okay. were there at the debates. We had yeah, them all to get behind debates. us because we had a strategy to get the number one spot. Okay. Taking the number one spot away from Rahm Emanuel cost him anywhere from twenty five to thirty percent of the vote which means he would have came in approximately maybe a close third place. Okay. Well, that's the number one spot. The other thing is we had done our research. Anyone who has ever ran for the city of Chicago in the mayor's position with the number one spot has never lost. So Rom was really nervous for the force we held that spot. Mm -hmm. He got so nervous he called down to Springfield and had the attorney for Michael Madigan to come in. They okay. went and pulled all the big guns they could, and we held them off. Our, our strategy was to get that number one spot. Our plan and strategy was to bring everybody behind us and make it one-on-one. -on -one. We would have taken them out. Okay, so you, the plan, they, they, they did that. So what, what, was, what, what was the reasoning? Okay, you're talking about the strategy. Right, so let me get to this. So what happened was they decided that they didn't want to do it, and we mm. knew. Okay. That based upon the numbers of us that were in there, that that would separate the vote. That would be a waste of time. Our thing was to get rid of Rahm Emanuel and put in there someone brand new and different so that we would have a bargaining chip. Because whoever got in there definitely would have to deal with the black community. Okay, so you're out the, off, you're out of the seat, out the race right now. Who are you backing? Walls or uh, Wilson? You got real good jokes. Let me explain something. To you. Uh, are you on, are you going I'm to a the, are, are, okay? Are you going to the white side? Let's be real. L let's let's be real. I'm are, not you, back are, are you backing uh, Bob Fellarelli like uh, Amara Inya is uh, doing? Are, are, no, uh, and Shaw. 
No, no. I think the, the best course of action that we have right now, realistically, to get Rom out of there and to put him in.